Uh, we're doing episode two, so welcome to the Canadian Tax Secrets Podcast. Uh, I'm Rylan Olson, Steve Meldrum's here with me. Uh, we are going to talk about the capital dividend account, especially uh, how CDA plays in with insurance. you doing i'm doing awesome this is great this is fun i'm glad that you're younger than me and you can take care of all the tech to make this yeah, hopefully happen. it's not too uh too glitchy on the linkedin side um but steve what's on your mind when it comes to the capital dividend account and insurance what do accountants need to know yeah really at the end of the day uh a lot of accountants will know the basic uh composition or calculation of uh, capital dividend accounts, but some won't. So I think it's important to start there. When, you know, capital dividend account, it's a notional account that essentially, as we know, allows you to pay, uh, you know, pay money out to the shareholders without tax consequences. This is all related to integration theory, but um, at the end of the day, Capital dividend account is created from a couple main items, potentially a third. Main item is the non-taxable portion of a capital gain. And then the second item is life insurance proceeds. Specifically with life insurance, it's the death benefit minus your adjusted cost basis. Key point is ACB or adjusted cost basis is very different than adjusted cost base. So we want to make sure that as an accountant, you know, that there, there's a big distinction there. You know, when it comes to investments using the adjusted cost base, that's just really what you paid for it. Um, if it's something like a mutual, you know, something might also um, increase to that base amount, but adjusted cost basis is very different when it comes to life insurance. So. Anyway, you create CDA through either the non-taxable portion of the capital gain, or you're going to create it through the death benefit minus the adjusted cost basis. Third one, which, you know, a little more rare is if you get capital dividends paid from another corporation. So it's kind of corporation to corporation paying capital dividend account. So Mm -hmm. those are the three, I guess, definitions of what creates a capital dividend account. But uh, once we set up that, we want to get talking about you know, how can you optimize or how can you make that better? I think that's what we're trying to talk about. Yeah, last week we talked about uh, why use corporate insurance and the benefits of doing corporate insurance versus personally owned insurance. And the major benefit obviously with corporate insurance is the capital dividend account and the creation of capital dividend account. Because as you mentioned, integration is huge to pull proceeds out of the corporation tax-free, right? So Steve, why don't you talk to us a little bit, just high level, um, some strategies that are available for uh, using insurance uh, and creating CDA and how that can benefit corporate clients and how accountants can use that with their with their clients as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I would say, you know, before we, well, I'll talk about strategy and then maybe we'll talk just about how to optimize the strategy strategy secondly. So one strategy that um, is out there is you basically will try and put the corporate dollars into an insurance policy because it's a tax shelter, allow that money to accumulate and grow. But most business owners, they don't want to tie up their capital. They want to recirculate it and get it back into action. So what they're going to do is they can go assign that policy as collateral so they can get a third party loan and every normal bank or even other providers of financial institutions will give you a uh, advance you a loan based on on that policy so you have a business owner that puts money into the policy they can get it back into their pocket right away through a third party finance loan and then they can go about their different ventures or activities or even put it back into their own Mm -hmm. business but what happens there is upon death 
those that death benefit would come into the corporation they'd have to pay off the loan uh, but what would remain is potentially a little bit of cash okay that doesn't sound super attractive until you realize the second benefit which is the capital dividend account which you mentioned Ryland. so even though you put the money in the policy you took it back out for your business what you've been doing is you've actually been boosting this notional account, this capital dividend account. And then, um, you know, once that person's passed, there might be a little bit of cash that you can push out through the CDA, but you can use those other assets, whether it's real estate, whether it's other investments, and you can move it from the corporation to the estate of the shareholder or, or even other shareholders because you've created capital dividend account. Mm. So, That'd be yeah. one strategy. Um, so correct me if I'm wrong, but what you're really saying is we're creating an asset, which is a life insurance policy, and that life insurance policy has value. We're then going and taking a loan against that asset uh, so that our cash flow is next to zero or as low as we can get it. So you have an asset that's counteracting, being counteracted by the liability. However, the total CDA is the value of the asset, not the value of the asset minus the value of the liability, right? So basically we're trying to build an asset as big as we can, which is the CDA or the life insurance policy. And then we're offsetting that cash flow with the liability to therefore boost the CDA account without tying up our, our cash flow as that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. In fact, when you put it that way, you're almost triggering an event to have this policy grow with, as you said, without tying up your cash, you actually have this other CDA that's accumulating and, and getting larger and larger because of how it's calculated mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. So to me, it's more of an option, right? It's a, it's a, it's a way to make to pull future value out of your corporation without tying yeah. up your cash. You're just kind of almost doing some estate planning yeah, yeah. with it. Um, now we didn't even mention in there because I think you just want high level, but of course there's some tax deductions you can have. If you reinvest that cash into your business, you can write off the interest. You can also write off a portion of the insurance policy. Um, another strategy, that uh, that you can do to optimize the capital dividend account is you could um, you could look at uh, some donations. So you could look at charitable uh, donations and essentially similar idea, you put the money into an insurance policy or maybe you have an existing insurance policy and you can donate it to a charity. If it's a registered charity, then uh you know you you could create some some tax credits there or um you know there's a few other ways you could do do various yeah. things um and if you donate that insurance policy that, uh, uh the corporation that donates the insurance policy still gets the credit to the cda isn't that correct well, no, I was just correcting myself there. They wouldn't, you wouldn't get your cake and eat it too quite in that uh, scenario. That's what I was just thinking out loud. Um, but uh, maybe what I'll do is go back a little bit, Rylan, and just talk about when we talked about the business owner putting it in and taking yeah. the money back out. Um, there's a lot that you can do based on the actual insurance product that you have and how you design that insurance product. So. One is understanding the concept and the second is optimizing that insurance policy. Uh, yeah. You know, whether it's the type, you know, is it universal life, whole life? Do you have, you know, a base coverage or base coverage plus optional mm -hmm. amounts? So whenever you're doing accounts should know that when you're trying to optimize the capital dividend account, you really want to look at the actual product itself because you can have big swings in the amount of CDA that's created at different intervals based on how mm -hmm. you design it. Yeah, I think it always comes back to obviously what's the goal of the insurance? What are you trying to accomplish? Because some people, you know, are trying to uh, generate liquidity on death, so they want the cash value, right? They, 
And some people are, you know, higher net worth and they, they've got enough cash, they've got enough inheritance, but they're looking for, you know, an effective way to pull money out of the corporation. And that's, you know, that capital dividend. So depending on the goal of the client and the goal of the insurance really depends on how you structure it, which product you use and not only which product, but which company and how you structure that product uh, to really optimize that situation. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, as far as that, uh, I mean, other aspects of that we talked about when, when the business owner is, people sometimes wonder, you know, how, how do I start or how big can this thing go? Uh, but it really comes down to, uh, you know, your ability to, to get lending. Mm -hmm. And it's usually pretty easy because they'll lend based on the cash value of the policy, but they'll go all the way up to the actual premium. So, and even beyond where you could, uh, you know, you can essentially have, like you said, a net, uh, net zero outlay. So that you haven't tied up any of your capital or cash, but now you've got that other asset yeah. that's just building up uh, future capital. Yeah, I think that's account. a good point to bring up as well about having to qualify for this. Um, obviously this is an insurance product, so not everybody can actually qualify to get this type of insurance or, you know, maybe with the lending, you know, there's qualification. So it's not just everybody can do this. It's a, it's kind of a, a novelty or, you know, a, a product that takes some underwriting, takes some discipline and is only uh, certain people can qualify for as well. So that was a good point to, to bring up. Not everybody can do this because not everybody can qualify either financially, their health style um, or other factors. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, we're, we're kind of bounced around cause we're just doing this live and, uh, being pretty raw with it, but, um, very much on, uh, when you're, when you're building the actual product, you can, or the solution, you can build it in a way so that the, you know, the, the cost structure to you might be the same. So you can have kind of a level premium, but if you twist twist the insurance policy a different way, it can really amp up your um, capital dividend account creation just because of how how the algorithms work and how it actually works in the background as far as uh, government regulations. So cool, lots can be done. Yeah. So I don't know. That's just a touch on capital dividend account and one little strategy, but cool. Is there anything else that you feel like accountants should know about CDA and insurance? Um, I can't think off the top. Um, just yeah, that it's good. good. You should really, uh, I would just highlight, I guess. And if you have any final points after, but, um, the CDA of life insurance is created by the total death benefit of the insurance policy, right? So like we mentioned earlier, the total death benefit minus the ACB is the CDA created. Now we can inflate the death benefit by doing different things and structuring it different ways. Um, but it's the total death benefit minus the ACB creates the CDA. We then introduced loans into the equation or policy loans, third party loans, that doesn't actually affect the CDA of the policy. Uh, it just affects the the cash value or the cash flow, I guess, of, of the policy, right? So even if you have a loan against an insurance policy, the CDA is still the total death benefit, not the total death benefit minus the loan minus the ACB, but just the total death benefit minus the ACB. So for the accountants, that's really the, the takeaway uh, is we can create yeah. CDA or inflate CDA by limiting um, cash flow inside an insurance policy. Uh, if CDA is the, the main goal of the client to uh, create or if they need the liquidity or if they, you know, want to build an asset inside their corporation. Yeah. And that's just to, to add to what you said there. I think that's the key is it, it's not just about the death. It's, it's not about always the liquidity. It's sometimes you're trying to create that notional account so that your other assets yeah. can move over. 
like really what we talked with that loan strategy is it might be a wash for the most part, but now we've got that notional account, which can mm -hmm. allow other assets to transfer yeah. the wealth. So, so it's not just having life insurance. It's actually creating an account to move your other assets flow through yeah. without tax. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for everyone yeah. for coming. I mean, uh, thanks for trying it yeah, out. So there's high level CDA for life insurance. Uh, thanks everybody on our live on LinkedIn. It's cool to do this. We're going to try and come on here often, do our podcast through here so we can keep delivering uh, life insurance value to our accountant connections. So thanks everybody. We'll uh, chat again soon. See ya. Cheers.